Father, we love you and thank you so very much for today. Thank you that we get to hear your word. Help us to gain some truth, some wisdom, some knowledge, some understanding, something that can help us in our lives. Whether we're young or whether we're old, Father, help us with your knowledge and truth. And, and Father, help us to, to truly live for you the way that you have called us to. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Today we're talking about don't be rebellious. Don't be rebellious. Now that might be a term we're, we've heard before, but we don't exactly know what it means, so we're going to go ahead and read a definition. The definition of rebellion is characterized by or expressing resistance to or defiance of authority. Kids, that basically means not minding. Have you heard that term before? You're not minding. You're not listening. You're not obeying. We're talking about not being rebellious today. And we're going to be talking about obeying. Sometimes that's a phrase we don't like hearing as kids. Obey. Man, some of them rules I just don't like. What do you mean I can't have candy all day long? <laughs> what do you mean I can't stay up and play my video games all day long? Oh. What do you mean I have a bedtime? How, what do you mean I have to go to school? What do you mean I have to do this and I have chores? What are you talking about? Why do I have to do all these things? Now, as kids, we don't really fully understand the benefits of all these things. We just think, I want to do this now, and I'm not getting to, so therefore I'm mad, right? We don't think about the benefits of school, do we? At the time, we just think, I don't want to go there. I was that kid. I did not like school. Anybody else out there in the, in the congregation today like, like me? I didn't like going. I like you. You like me? Well, good. I like you too, bro. Like and if you, do, if you did like going to school, you were considered like a weirdo, all right? You were considered an oddball. What do you mean you like coming to school? Hold on. All right? I don't think that way now, but back then I used to think, well, oh, you're a nerd or whatever. <laughs> anyway, school is actually a good thing for you, believe it or not, kids. Eli, you like school? Well, good. That's awesome. That's good that you do like it. Nevertheless, all of those things you're told not to do or to do are for good. When your parents tell you, don't eat all that candy, they're trying to save you from having to go to the dentist. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, it is not fun. That is one of my most apprehensive places of being at is at the dentist. Anybody else agree with me? Yeah. I do not like being on a table like this and somebody poking around in my mouth with a drill or yanking out a tooth out, man, I'm going to tell you, I cannot stand when that happens. And the blood, oh, sometimes I pass smooth out. It has happened at least two times. Pass smooth out because of blood loss. Or just so when your parents tell you, slow down, stop eating candy, don't eat those sweets, they're trying to help you. And when they tell you to eat good food, Brielle, you need to eat it. <laughs> because your body needs the nutritional value that is in those good foods. Like carrots and broccoli and things like that. Asparagus. And asparagus. <laughs> getting fancy but nevertheless the things that our parents tell us to do are for good they're not for evil they're not for bad and the same way goes with what God tells us to do when he tells us as our heavenly father to do this or don't do this he's not telling us because he's mean he's telling us because he loves us and he's looking out for us and he's watching out for our best interests even if we don't fully understand. Well, I don't understand why I have to do this or why I shouldn't do this. Well, that's okay. You just obey. 
And maybe in time you'll learn to understand why he's told you that. But everything has a purpose. Right? Let's get into the scripture. Okay. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Kids, y'all know what sin is? Hopefully you do. Sin is doing something wrong, right? Yeah. Right. Right. So we are not to do that. We are not to sin. But nevertheless, we need to take counsel to the Lord. We need to pray, don't we? We need to ask God, what do you want me to do? Show me. And we need to devise plans, but not evil plans. We need to devise plans that are according to God's Spirit. Right? Right. God, show me what you want me to do today. Not what I want to do, but what you want me to do. All right, let's go to Psalm 78, 7 verse uh, 7 through 8. <coughs> that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. See, God wants us to keep His commandments. And may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that did not set its heart aright or in the right place. And whose spirit was not faithful to God. I don't want to be like that. Some of us may have had the unfortunate uh, position of having parents that were not living right. But nevertheless, we are not to follow after those bad examples, but to do the opposite. I just saw this post not too long ago on Facebook. And it said, this person was a drunk because his dad was a drunk. And that's why he's the way he was. And he blamed it on his dad. But on the other hand, his brother never, never touched a drop of alcohol in his life. And it's because of his dad. He said he did not want to be an alcoholic because his dad was. Amen. So you have two different brothers who looked at the scenario differently. I did it because my dad did it. I didn't do it because my dad did it. Right? You don't have to follow after bad examples. You don't have to. The devil will, will twist it and make you think you do. Well, hey, these kids are doing this, so I want to do it too. No. You don't be that way. You be the leader. You don't be the follower. And you be the leader that leads people to good. Amen. In your school. Or in your home. Or with your friends. You don't follow after the crowd going to do bad things. You say, no, let's go to church. Let's go live for the Lord. And you go do good things. And you set the trend of following after God at a young age. And believe it or not, there's going to be older folks who are looking at you. And they might come to God too. Because you did. Alright kids, y'all listening? Y'all pay attention. I got a good little funny video for y'all to watch at the end. So what's, what are we talking about? Not being what? Rebellious. Don't be rebellious. And what do we need to do so we're not re uh, rebellious? We, we obey. We obey, that's good. right. All right, let's go to Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents. Now, this is God talking to you in the Bible. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Y'all want to do what's right? Obey your parents. All right? For this is right. And then he tells you, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you. Everybody want to be well with you? That you may live long on the earth. You want good things to happen to you and that you live long on the earth? Well, obey your parents. Honor them. So let's see what the definition of obedience is. What is obey? 
that's dutifully complying with the commands or orders or instructions of one in authority. Doing what they tell you to do. That's as simple as I can put it. If they told you to do it, you need to do what, bro? Uh, listen. Listen, that's right. right. If we tell you to do something, you do it. Is there any back talk involved? No. Yes, sir. Is there doing something the opposite of what was told? No. <laughs> but obedience, doing it, following the commands or orders, all right? Now let's see what the definition of honor is. High respect as that shown for special merit and recognition or esteem. So basically respect is you really care about obeying because you want to make that person proud or happy with your efforts. You want them to not be sad. You don't want them to be mad. So you care, you respect what they say, and you want to do it. So you're not just complying, but you're doing it because you want to comply. You, you do it because you have a desire to make them happy. You have a desire to fulfill your purpose. Obedience and honor are interconnected here. God tells us to mind our parents for a lot of reasons. But I believe the number one reason is so we can learn how to obey God. And also obey other authority figures in our lives. Such as teachers or elders, pastors, policemen or our government leaders. See, when we learn how to obey our parents, then we know how to obey others that are in authority as well. But if you start out in life disobeying your parents, more than likely it will lead you on a path of disobedience and rebellion through everything in your life. And the worst one is with God. Amen. When you start out disobeying your parents, more than likely you're going to grow up to be disobedient to what God has told you to do in His Word. You will not recognize His authority. You will not respect what He wants. Right? That's not good. So we need to do what, Brill? Uh, obey, obey our parents. I want y'all to pay attention. I only have a few more scriptures, okay? Hebrews 3, 7 through 19. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear His voice, today is the same day. He is telling us today as well. If you will hear His voice, Spirit, Holy Spirit, help us to recognize this. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another or encourage one another daily while it is called today. And today is today, right folks? Yes. Today is today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today. Do you, is today today? Today is today. Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was He angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness, and to whom He did swear that they would not enter His rest. But the, to those who did not obey, those who did not obey God, folks, 
So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief, because they did not obey God, because they practiced unbelief everywhere they were, because they didn't obey what God told them to do everywhere they went, because they murmured and complained everywhere they went, they were not allowed to enter into that rest. Whew! I better have a pattern of obedience then. Lord, help us. Help us to know how to obey and not to be rebellious. I have three more scriptures and then we're going to watch a good video. Y'all keep paying attention. Everybody okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith followed, considering the outcome of their conduct. All right? Anybody who is in rule over you, but more specifically here, those who are in head of the church. Jesus has called the pastor to shepherd the flock, so he wants y'all to obey what the pastor is speaking. All right? As long as it is according to God. Right? As long as it's scriptural. So what I'm telling you right now, you need to obey. All right? I'm basically God's mouthpiece. He's wanting me to relay what He once said, and He wants you to obey. All right? Hebrews 13, 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Basically, mind, listen, pay attention. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. I must give an account to God of my conduct here. I must give an account of my shepherding. As I shepherd the flock, I have to uh, give an account to God how well I did that. But then he says, let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. Or that wouldn't be good for you. If you make it hard for the pastor to shepherd you, you're always just uh, always complaining about this or that, or you're always mad about something, or always saying, well, I didn't like when you said this, and I didn't like that. Don't, don't give grief to the pastor, okay? Because it would be unprofitable for you. That's what he's saying. All right? So you need to know how to be submissive. I know sometimes that can be a hard thing. Let's go to 1 John 5, 2 through 3. Here's the main one, folks. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. Amen. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. If we really love God this morning, we will want to keep His commandments. When you hear Scripture spoken in the morning on Sundays, you need to say, yes, Lord. I agree. I want to do that. Or I agree with that, Father. Not have an attitude of rebellion. Well, I'm not going to do that. Or I don't care what you said. I'm not going to do that. Or I'm going to do this my way. That's not how you need to be. You need to be obedient but willingly obedient. You need to have a desire to want to do that, to please God, right? Amen. And He will reward you. Trust me. He will reward your efforts in obedience. Now, we're going to have a video played here in uh, just a second of my dog being obedient. And he gets rewarded with a couple things. Daddy! You want cookie? Oh, you're sitting pretty. Mm. You know, obedience is very important to God. We can be obedient too. <laughs> He's already trying to do Jim, this. Trick. Speak. Speak. Good. Good boy. General. Sit. Good. Shake. Good. Pray with Daddy. Yes, thank you, Jesus, for this food. Amen. Good. Sweet. Sweet. Catch it. Good. Oh. Here. Catch it. Sit. Catch it. Oh, good. Yay, Daddy. Nina. Get it. Get it. Get it! 
Catch it. Zip. Good. Go get it. Bring it to daddy. Was he? Good. Very. He was pretty obedient, wasn't he? He didn't want to pass. <laughs> we need to be that obedient and even more. He was doing it just for the treats. He was doing it just for the cookie, just for the chicken. But we don't need to obey God just for the blessings. We don't need to obey God just so we can get to go to heaven. We need to obey God because we care about what he says. We need to obey God because we agree with him. And if you don't agree with him at first, you need to get to the place to where you do. Because he knows what's best. Even if you don't understand it or not. And that might be the case for some of us. Well, I don't understand that. But that's okay because we have just little pea brains. And he's got the biggest mind of all time. He's the genius of geniuses is what I like to call it. We can never be on his level of fathoming what is the correct thing for us to do. Sometimes we can get there if we ask him to help us. But if for some reason you come to a place where I just don't understand it and I'm not ever going to understand it, but that's okay because I love you and I know what you're doing. I know you know what you're doing. And I'm okay with that. So I'm going to agree with you whether I understand it or not. And I'm going to be on your side about it. Because I'm going to do it to please you. I want to put a smile on your face. Because I respect you and I care about you. And I love you. Right? Because that last scripture we said, If you really love God, obey His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. Meaning they're not that if you really think about it and if you really think about the outcome of obeying those commands it's good for you good for those around you all your family, your friends your church, your church family, your community the whole world and it's good for you in your relationship with God when you obey those commands so let's learn to not be rebellious but to be obedient. All right, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit. Uh, whenever you join the church, you're recognizing my authority. And I know that's going to sound weird, but you're recognizing the authority that God has given me to shepherd you. Now, if you just come to the church, then I have no real, you know, I mean, I can try to give you advice and things like that. But whenever you tell yourself that I want to be a member here and I, I, I'm going to place myself in a I'm going to let somebody be authority over me you have to have the place to where you want to listen to what they say alright and if I come to you and I tell you hey brother or sister what you're doing is wrong you, you can't say well you don't have any place to do that because that is exactly what my job is to be I am supposed to correct and rebuke and exhort you with long suffering I am to guide you into the way that you should go Amen. and to the best of my ability because I have to give an account God holds me into strict judgment if I do not do this so don't get mad at me because believe it or not there has been a couple people who have joined the church and has gotten mad at me whenever I've done this and that's not the right thing. You should be accepting of it. Even if you don't agree with me. 
Even if you say, well, I don't agree with you, brother. Well, that's okay. I had to give you the truth the way that I see it. And we can leave on good terms. But nevertheless, it's my job to do that. So never think that, oh, well, Pastor Brandon, well, who does he think he is coming and trying to correct me, tell me how I should live my life? Well, that when you join a church, that's exactly what you're saying I, that you want. I want the accountability. And believe it or not, accountability is a good thing. Amen. I want somebody to tell me if I'm getting out of line. Amen. I want somebody to tell me if I'm messing up. And I've told y'all many times, and I still will, if you see me sinning, come to me. And you tell me, brother, this is what you've done wrong that is a sin. Now, if you want to just nitpick and say, well, brother, you spend too much time preaching on Sunday, I don't want to hear all that. I don't, want, I don't care about your nitpicks, all right? You keep that to yourself. But if you have a legitimate thing that you see me sinning and doing wrong, I want you to tell me. Amen. Because I want to do what's right. I want to obey. I don't want to be rebellious. I want, <laughs> I want to please God. Amen. And everybody in this room, if you have that same desire, that's why you join a church. You join it for the family. You want to be a part of a family. And you want to have rebuke. You want to have correction. You want to get in line with what God is leading you to do. Amen. All right, thank you, Lord. Everybody's okay. They're not mad at me. All right. All right, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you so very much. Thank you for this day. Thank you that you're so good. Thank you that we do have a family of like-minded believers, Father, brothers and sisters in Christ, where we can gather together. We appreciate the fact that you are with us. And we love you. Father, help all of us to not be rebellious. Whether we are young or old, Father, help us to be obedient to what you have called us to do in your word. Help us to be obedient to our parents and honor them, as well as those who have been placed in authority in our community and in, in our government, Father. Help us to know how we can follow and be respectful to the rules and laws of the land. And Father, we trust that you will help us. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.